I'm going to minimize all of this. Um, and let us begin. So welcome to worship, everybody. As I said, our, uh, let's begin with our welcome from Peter and Linda Johnson. Good morning, Holy Trinity, and welcome to worship. We are Peter and Linda Johnson. We live in Alton Bay, and we've been members of Holy Trinity for 40 years. We arrived home from Florida on May 1st and had to quarantine for 14 days. Our daughter, Sarah Cutting, had stocked our refrigerator, and we were safe to stay at home and uh, not get out. Since then, we've been using our time to spruce up our yard. Peter's planted his tomatoes, and our yard is beginning to bloom. We've been fortunate to see, at a social distance, of course, both of our children and their families. A couple of weeks ago, our son Eric, wife Megan, and our grandkids, Jack and Evan, came up from their home in Medfield, Massachusetts for a picnic at Hilton Park with takeout from Newark's. This is the first time that we have seen the kids since January when we came back for Evan's fifth birthday. When Jack turned 10 in May, we had a Zoom birthday party. Daughter Sarah, Mark, Brandon, and Emma live in Stratford, so we've been able to see them a little more often, still keeping our social distance and being outside. This has been the most difficult part of this pandemic, not being able to hug our grandchildren. I'm sure many of you can relate. About 10 days ago, we got together with Jean Klein and her daughter Carol at their home in, in Durham, New Hampshire. Many of you might not know this, but the Kleins were backdoor neighbors to us and our property abutted there in Durham. For the better part of 28 years, Len and Jean served as surrogate grandparents to our kids. Eric and Megan were married at Holy Trinity. Sarah and Mark also married at Holy Trinity, and all four of our kids, all four of our grandkids were baptized there. So it's a very special place. In November, it'll be 40 years since Len and Jean stood up for us and, and were our sponsors to become members at Holy Trinity. We've had a couple of cruises out on the big lake in our boat, and this week uh, we were able to get out for a round of golf. Uh, the first time since we returned from Florida. So, as you can see, we've tried to get outside as much as possible, do things around the yard, and stay safe. We hope you are all well, and we look forward to worshiping together with our Holy Trinity family. Thank, Thank you, you, and, and God, God bless. Perfect cuttings. Thank you very much. Welcome to worship, everybody, and let us begin with our gathering hymn, is the Kyrie eleison one you'll find very familiar? We sing on a regular basis. It's setting eight. <laughs> Every day. For 
for your spirit to guide that you center our lives in the water and the world. That you nourish our souls with your body and blood. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear me, hear me, son. All the world and down our way. Hear me, hear me, son. Every day. It is great to hear that familiar tune. Thank you, everybody, for putting that together. We continue our worship with Graduation Sunday and honoring our high school and college graduates. We apologize if anybody was missed. Another turning point, a fork stuck in the road. Time grabs you by the wrist, directs you where to go. So make the best of this test and don't ask why. It's not a question, but a lesson learned in time. It's something unpredictable, but in the end is right. I hope you had the time of your life. So take the photographs and still frames in your mind Hanging on a shelf in good health and good time Tattoos and memories and dead skin on trial For what it's worth, it was worth all the while It's something unpredictable, but in the end is right I hope you had the time of your life But in the end it's right I hope you had the time of your life It's something unpredictable But in the end it's right I hope you had the time of your life We now from hear from last year's recipients of the Faith and Service Award an update on how they are doing. Hi everyone. I firstly just want to say how grateful I am to be a recipient of the Faith and Service Award. Um, this award gave me the opportunity to dedicate a part of my college experience to all the people that were there to support me going into higher education. Um, receiving this award really meant a lot to me because it meant that you all trusted me that I was going to do good and use it for good so I could go and get a better education and do better and use the knowledge I had learned to try and help this world, especially in the time that we're living in right now. Um, my first year in college was eye-opening, to say the least. It gave me the opportunity to explore anything and everything I'd ever wanted. It included meeting new people, joining so many new clubs, um, picking classes, all in probably the most accepting and supportive environment I've ever been in. Um, being in an environment, building an essentially pretty separate life from home, because even though I technically only live 15 minutes away, being by myself on campus without my parents to rely on 
taught me how to live independent and I limited myself to only coming home when it was really, really necessary. But of course, the occasional visit happened every once in a while, which was nice, but I really wanted to take this time to myself and think of new ways that I could grow and try to build on my own. After finishing my first year in college, I have learned as cliche and as many times as probably all of you have heard, if you ever need help, you should always reach out for help because I know it can be nerve wracking and I know that sometimes people can get anxious with that kind of thing. But honestly, people are always willing to help you out if you just ask. And I've also learned that the company you keep doesn't have to influence you if you don't want them to, but as hard as you try, they might one way or another and it's always up to you how you interpret that and how you can try and turn that into something positive and productive but throughout this year I always reminded myself no matter what was going on as long as I kept trying and putting in all the effort that I could God will always support me and that kept me grounded and remind, reminded me of why I was in college in the first place. So thank you for awarding me with the Faith and Service Award last year. It is greatly appreciated, and I can't wait to see you all in church soon. Bye. Thank you, Juanita. That was great. So now we hear from Robert Scammon. Hi, Holy Trinity. As most of you know, this year um, I was doing mechanical engineering and Air Force ROTC at UNH. Uh, the year wasn't easy um, with my major and um, having to wake up for PT with Air Force and all the other labs um, that we had to do for our TC um, for our leadership. They were all pretty difficult, but uh, got through them. Um, being sent home early was also not planned for, um, and learning from home is definitely not the same with uh, mechanical engineering being such a hands-on major. Um, but we got through it. Luckily, it's over, so <laughs> that's the nice part. Um, but it was very refreshing to come home on weekends um, when I could and come to church and see all of you. All, um, all of you. It was really nice. Um, and also, when I was home, um, attending Zoom church was uh, nice and uh, kept me going, um, gave me some oomph to finish off. Uh, the care package that uh, you guys sent me was very nice, and uh, I finished it very quickly. <laughs> and uh, overall, I just want to say thank you for the Faith and Service Award that I was awarded last year, and uh, for all the support that you guys give me um, every time I see you all. So thank you. Thank you, Robert. It's always good to see both of you guys and hear what you're up to. We continue with hearing the recipients of this year's Faith and Service Awards. And also note, as you see on the screen, all graduates have a gift to be picked up at the church office. You can do that Tuesday from 12 to 3 or Thursday 9 to noon, or email Mark at the church's schedule of time. But all graduates... Uh, have a gift for them at the church. Helen, we turn it over to you to hear this year's award uh, recipients. Hi everyone, I'm here to announce the recipients of this year's Faith and Service Award. This is an award that is given to students who are from our church who have shown faith and service both in the community and in the church. This year we are recognizing three. The first is Matthew Clement, Matthew Clement has grown up in our congregation and has been involved in all kinds of service in the church, but also has been an Eagle Scout and earned his Eagle project making three small libraries. The second recipient, although he's only been here for two years with us, is Sam Crick. Sam has been very involved in his past church, but also has just jumped in and been involved in the things that we do in our church as well. He's always there to help. He's helped members of our church and he has uh, served in uh, feeding and helping through the Interact Club of Dover High School. The last recipient is Verabel Picassi, and Verabel is one who has been involved in Vacation Bible School. She's done artwork for the church. She's been very active in her high school as a leader, a mentor, and a role model. So all three, congratulations. We are so proud to have you receive the Faith and Service Award for 2020. Well done. Thank you very much. We continue our service with the gospel reading brought to us by Yvonne Topping. Today's reading is from the book of Matthew, chapter 28. Then the eleven went to Galilee. They went to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. 
When they saw Jesus, they worshiped him, but some did not believe. Jesus came to them and said, all power has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go and make followers of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to do all the things I have told you, and I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Word of God, word of life. Thank you, Ivan. It is Trinity Sunday. I don't know if I mentioned that at the beginning. So um, it is always the first Sunday that comes after Pentecost, right? So we come out of Easter season. Easter celebrates the risen Christ. Uh, at the end of that season, which is seven weeks, then we get Pentecost. So we have Ascension Sunday, which ends Easter, Jesus going back up to heaven. Pentecost then is only one day. It's one day this, for that season in which it is the giving of the Holy Spirit. And we had that last week. And then we move into what is called ordinary time or time after Pentecost. And that season of the church always begins with Trinity Sunday. It's kind of a culmination uh, where we celebrate the three ways in which we have come to understand God. One God, three persons. So there's a little comic here. You can see one free coffee per person. So here's God. So I guess I'll take three free coffees, right? One God, three persons, but is one God. So that's going to be our topic for today. Before we get into the actual sermon, I do have a short video that recorded uh, addressing all that's been going on and so much of the feedback that I have received over this past week that I want to say thank you for, uh, for my sermon last week and also for the email that I sent out. So I'm going to play that for everybody and then we'll get to the sermon. Hey everybody from Holy Trinity, this is Pastor Tim. I am sitting in my car. I'm, uh, I have one of my kids at their activities as they are beginning to resume, which gives me a sign of hope. Uh, that soon we will, at, in some form, gather for worship as well outside in God's creation. So be looking for that uh, information in the uh, weeks to come. But that's not why I'm recording this video now. I first want to say thank you. Thank you for all the ways and people have reached out to me over this past week to talk about the sermon I gave last week or the letter that was emailed as part of tidings uh, on Tuesday. Uh, not tidings, but just an email that I sent out. I want, thank you for all the ways and people uh, expressed what they were feeling. And I heard the gamut of things. I heard from people saying, you didn't go far enough. And I wish you also would have said to uh, people saying, I couldn't disagree with you more over it. But all of those conversations I felt were respectful. People listened and they were productive. And that is, if we're going to get anywhere in all of this in the world, that needs to be part of it. So thank you for it. As we go forward in this, please do not hesitate to reach out with concerns, with feedback, with encouraging words, whatever it might be. You know how to get a hold of me. You know, uh, um, call, text, um, email, whatever it might be. And I welcome these future conversations that we can have together, both individually and collectively as a church. I also want to share a little bit about uh, how I deal with things when I'm confronted with the teaching of Jesus that maybe is different than what I always understood or thought before. Um, I kind of say I have a love-hate relationship with seminary because that's part of what seminary is, starting to understand why you think what you think and are there new ways of thinking or how do you bring into your own your other ways of thinking into new insights and new learning and new understandings. And I frequently have found myself going back to a story from John 6 about Jesus and his disciples, both the 12 and a larger group. And in it, uh, Jesus just got done with the teaching and a larger group of disciples come to Jesus and say, who can understand this? This teaching is too difficult. And Jesus' response is, do I offend you? And people leave. Not many are left. Uh, people scatter. And these people that were starting to uh, incorporate the teachings of Jesus into their life, were starting to follow him, now decide, you know what? It's too much. I'm out. I can't do it anymore. 
And now Jesus is just left with the 12 disciples. And he turns to Peter and he says, are you also going to leave me? And Peter's response is one that we all know. I bet you know it, even if you don't know it. Because we say it every Sunday when we gather in the sanctuary for worship, or we sing it every Sunday. And the, Peter's response is, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And frequently I'm tempted as I've gone throughout my life as a Christian, as I've gone through my life as a seminary student, as I've gone through my life as a pastor, um, when I am confronted with another way of thinking that I didn't have before to be like the, to be like so many people, and I've even done it before. It's too hard, too much, I'm out, I disagree, it's not for me, whatever. Jesus, you're, you've lost it. And I strive to be more like Peter. And I'm not saying Peter maybe always understood or agreed with Jesus. But he hung in there and it said, you have the words of eternal life. Peter's like saying, you know what? I'm still in. I may not know the way, but I am, I, I'm working on it. Because there's something about the way of Jesus that is so compelling. I need to find out more. That a way of love and forgiveness and reconciliation and truth, the way that it convicts us, that makes us feel uncomfortable, hopefully to bring us out to the other side. I think that's what those apostles, those early disciples uh, did. Even when they left, they came back. You know, we have these words of Jesus saying, I, I deny Jesus three times. And yet still, uh, Peter comes around, you know, that's how I deal with it. And as a pastor, you know, by no means do I think I'm Jesus and I have the wisdom of Jesus. All I'm trying to do is to help convey uh, the love of God and what it means for us and to show us new or different under, uh, ways of living. If you remember one of those things I said when I came in, it was a Saturday afternoon, I'm standing in the sanctuary, uh, kind of meeting the, the wider church for the first time on, a, I think it was a November uh, Saturday afternoon. And I'd said, there's times in which you're going to love me because I'm going to say exactly what you want to hear. And then there's times you're not going to like me very much because I'm going to say what we need to hear. And I changed that. Not what you need to hear, what we need to hear. Please understand when I say these things, I am saying them to myself as much as I am saying to you. Um, and so there are times in which we need to hear what we don't want to hear. And then we have to go through the process of why does this make me feel uncomfortable? Why do I disagree with it? How does it go with what I, uh, with what I believe? What are my new beliefs going to be? How do we incorporate them all in? It's not easy being a follower of Jesus. It's not easy being a Christian. It's not easy being a pastor. Like it's just not easy being a spouse, a parent, a, a, you name it, right? It's not easy, but we trust that it is good. I thank you for allowing me uh, to be with you on your journey as we understand what it's like to be a follower of Jesus in today's world. Amen. Let us continue with the sermon for Trinity Sunday. All right, welcome back. Here I am in front of the whiteboard. Uh, that helped me last week, and I understand it seemed like it helped out a lot of people that when there are certain terms or concepts to have them up here, I had somebody say, I don't know if that was a sermon or a teaching. Uh, maybe it's both. Uh, sermons are proclamation of the good news, and when we receive the good news, we also learn as we go through it. So maybe this is a sermon teaching combination just in a different way. Today is Holy Trinity Sunday. It is not a day in which we celebrate our church, Holy Trinity. Today is a day in which we celebrate the ways in which God has revealed God's self to us. The three parts or the three persons of God. And you know what they are. Say them with me now. We believe in God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Now, a lot of sermons, and I've done this in the past, and they'll continue on in the future, I might even do it again, try and talk about the ways in which uh, we can have three in one. It's one God, but three parts. When this came up, 
uh, in history. It's just such a hard concept to have because Christianity, remember, drew out of Judaism. And Judaism is very solidly monotheistic. That's one of the things that established them or made them different than so many of the other religions or lines of belief in ancient times as there was gods after gods after gods. And the ancient Israelites were solely monotheistic. There is one God. And so now as Christianity comes and be, is a form or a, uh, a, another aspect um, we believe God in three, Father, Son, and Spirit. And so there have been conversations over the centuries on how to describe one God, but is really three distinct persons or beings. Uh, in fact, churches have split over this. I'm sure if we want to bring in Mark Edwards to talk about the Great Schism in 1054 and um, how they argued over the Spirit and does the Spirit proceed from the Father and the Son? Does the Spirit just proceed from the Father? Uh, all of that kind of stuff. I'm not going to bore you with that this morning. We'll let Mark Edwards bore you with that some other time. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> And I do want to say this is some of the ways in which we have tried to do that, right? St. Patrick is one of the most famous ones. St. Patrick introduced the concept of using a clover leaf. And we have Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One, two, three, but they are all connected there, right? That's one way. I'm not going to get into how that's wrong, just explaining that way. We also have other ways in which people talk about an apple. Is that an apple? And we'll take a bite out of that apple, right? And you have the skin, you have the flesh of the apple, and you have a seed of the apple. And maybe uh, the skin is what we see, so that's Jesus, the Son. Um, the flesh is the Spirit, and the seed maybe is the source, Holy Spirit, and that's a father. And that's one way uh, to distinguish how that occurs. Another way uh, is an egg. And let's say it's a see-through egg. And you can see the yolk inside. And then you have all the white of the egg. Again, the shell is Jesus or the son. The yolk might be the father. The uh, filling, filling, what do you call that? The white part of the egg. <laughs> The inside is the Holy Spirit. It gets at the idea, three parts, one whole. This is what I don't like when we try and explain it that way. That's just pure information about the Trinity. I don't struggle with one in three. I'm able to say we believe in one God and that God is revealed to us in three persons. Do I know how it works? Not really. I'm more interested in what that means for us and what that means for us, especially today. So I'm going to wipe all of this out. I want to know what does the Trinity mean for us? And to me, the Trinity is about relationships. It's about being so intertwined that yes, they're distinct, but they are so intertwined, they are the same, that you can't simply separate it out and say, here's one, here's one, here's one. But it's like, you know, I know there's a force, lots of force about this, right? When, which this force is actually thought to be one organism. I, I wish I could think of it off the top of my head. But you have all these trees that look like individual, but the root system, scientists have actually said this is one large organism that you can't see how they're connected, but they are. What I want to stress is the Trinity is des maybe designed to tell humanity how intertwined and interconnected we are, that we cannot simply separate it out and say, you're this, you're this, you're this. That we are may not be the same, but we are one. That's not a message for today, is it? We need to understand how we are one. 
If you watch that sermon last week, uh, if you watch what's going on in the news, it doesn't have to be just from this week. We continually divide ourselves into groups in which we are no longer viewing ourselves as one, but we view ourselves as different and we fight over these differences. What's on the forefront of us right now is race. Here's the thing about race. And again, I'm going to recommend uh, this podcast. If you saw the email last week, Thursday tidings that went out, I said to, if you want to continually learn more, um, here are some resources. There's a podcast on there. It comes from Seen on Radio. And season two is a series called Seen White. It's phenomenal. But episode three or four, they're talking about the concept of race and that really doesn't exist. And I mentioned this earlier, but this is what I found so fascinating. They talked about if you want to see genetic diversity um, and you put two groups of people, you have one group of here and let's say they're all white. I'll put three groups of people. Here they're all, I'll just say black. And we have a third group of people that is mixed. You know where you will find the greatest genetic diversity in those groups? In these groups. You are more likely to find genetic diversity in this group that is all white than you will in the groups that's mixed. You are more likely to find greater diversity in this group that is all black than in this group that is mixed. We are one, but we are not the same. Now, let me say this. Our goal, while we are the same, our goal is not colorblindness. Our goal is not conformity, so to speak, so we're all look or act or whatever the same. Our goal, God's goal, God's dream is equality, is justice, right? Unfortunately, what we do, we think, as opposed to not separating people in groups, we need to be colorblind. That's not the goal. Whoops. Or we think, um, here's your group, here's your group, here's your group. And we still even want, we might say they're equal, but we will say, and we'll use this, we'll use men, we'll use women, uh, whatever. We think, yeah, you're not the same, you're equal, but let me tell you, this is the role of women. This is the role of men, right? This is the role of, and we can put uh, sexuality in here. On this is how it should be, and we want to define what those roles are and say, yeah, they're equal, they're all equally important, but if this is who you are, this is who you have to be. It's almost like we've done that with the Trinity, I think, also, and I don't think that's God's dream for the world. God's dream for the world is not to divide up into these groups, even though there are differences there. It's to respect those differences and help people understand what are the gifts that they have and help them to develop it and use them. To me, right? You have God and the Trinity, one God, three persons, three ways in which God, I don't even know if, if that's the right thing to say ways, distinct ways in which God acts toward us or on behalf or through us. How do we see those gifts in each other? 
that we are so intricately intertwined. I can't so much separate you out, although it might be helpful at some level just to gain a deeper understanding like we're trying to do with the Trinity. But if we let the way in which we argue over the groups that we have, we miss out on the gifts that they give us. I think that's what's happened with the Trinity. We argue so much over, is it one God, three gods? Is it persons? Is it essence? Is it what? Does the Spirit come from the Son? Does the Spirit come from the Father and the Son? Right? We miss out on what it means for us today that God creates, that God redeems, that God sustains. God, the Father, creates us. Creator God, maybe it's better than using Father God because it brings in this aspect of male superiority, right? If we look at groups of this is what males are supposed to be, there's male tox toxicity, masculine toxicity right there. You can see how that's a chain reaction. God is one who creates. That's an essence of God, the creator. How do you have that essence of God within you? Another essence of God is the Redeemer. Christ redeems. That yes, we have strayed from the ways of God who created you, but yet that is not the end of the story. You have value. You have worth. You have been redeemed. How can you spread the good news that all of creation is being redeemed through what God has done in Jesus Christ? That's good news. And then we have the God who sustains us, the Holy Spirit that comes to us now, that fills us and gives us life. Maybe we should have fewer prayers to Jesus and more prayers to the Spirit. Because we say the Spirit is the one who is present. Christ is coming again in the future to finish the project, to finish the restoration. The Spirit is the one who is here now that is active in you and me in calling out our sin for what it is and saying that is not who you are. Gather together. Look each other in the eye and say, I see a child of God in you. You have gifts. Let's discover what those are together and use them in the world. I have gifts and they go together. We are so intricately intertwined, we cannot be separated. That does not mean we need to be the same. It means we need to appreciate and celebrate the diversity, if you want to say, the differences, the gifts that we all have. To me, that is so much more of a powerful meaning for Trinity Sunday, as opposed to just trying to say, see this shamrock? God is three in one. Great. I can recite that to you, but it holds no meaning. The meaning comes in being one. And yet, we have some differences that are so great among us. Let's not decide what we know, what those differences are, and how um, some are better than others, but to recognize, to learn about, to be surprised about the differences we have and how all together they are part of God's restoration project for the world. Amen. We continue our worship with confession and forgiveness. Together, let us say, we confess we place our security in systems and structures that we hope will bring us peace and comfort at the expense of others. We confess that we often prioritize our individual pain and suffering over the suffering of entire groups of people marginalized by governments, organizations, and social norms. Forgive us when we are silent and apathetic in the face of racial intolerance and bigotry, both overt and subtle, 
public and private. Empower us to speak boldly for justice and truth and help us to deal with one another without hatred or bitterness, working together with empathy and respect. Have mercy on all of our sins, O Lord, the things we have done and the things we have left undone. Receive God's forgiveness. Our God is a lover of justice who has established equity and executed justice and righteousness throughout the ages. Through God's grace, we are made equals. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Jesus Christ, I declare to you that God keeps God's promises. All of our sins are forgiven. We are now called to spread that forgiveness to all we encounter without fear and stop to the empires of our world striving to keep power through oppression in the name of safety and security. Amen. Offering this morning, uh, our social ministry update. We are getting so close to that $16,000. We are almost at 13 and a half thousand. So please, if you haven't donated, please do so. Uh, and our regular offering, uh, mail in the church, uh, mail in the mail, a uh, check in the mail, <laughs> uh, Alexio app on your phone, online through our website, and text to give as well. And Kurt Kasich has an update for us as well over one of our uh, places we give to. I'm Kurt Kasich and I'm speaking on behalf of the social ministry team. As you know, our church budget for this year was reduced. Last month, we began a special fundraising effort to attempt to bring our finances up to last year and hopefully beyond as far as support is concerned. Operation Blessing is a local organization that depends on our support to assist those who are the most vulnerable in our community. They provide their support with a triple-pronged approach, transaction, transition, and transformation. Their transaction ministry provides food, clothing, and household necessities to those in need. As much as 3,500 pounds of food are given out each week much of which is received from regional food banks at a fraction of the normal retail pricing. The next greatest portion of donated food comes from affiliated churches, civic groups, and food drives. They participate in the N68 Hours of Hunger program. These families are especially suffering now as a result of schools being closed and the elimination of cafeteria-provided meals. To solve this problem, they're providing additional food for those families. They're also delivering 300 meals to elderly self-quarantine clients. From the curtains to small appliances to dishes, they provide a range of household items free of charge to individuals and families who need them. Available items depend on recent donations, but do not include furniture, TVs, or electronics. They support the community through transaction, through transition in their Greenleaf Rec Center. It's a safe place for children and families and offers recreational activities for the kids, such as dance lessons, swimming lessons, cooking lessons, after school homework help, and open rec evenings. The adult opportunities include weekly community dinners, educational classes for getting ahead in life, and for personal finances. They have something for everyone. As far as transformation is concerned, Operation Blessing hopes to transform lives with the hope that comes through faith in Jesus Christ. Operation Blessing is one of the organizations you support through Holy Trinity. Your giving during this fundraising will allow us to continue our ministry. Thank you, Kurt. And I should add to that, that 13,461, that does help us, that does mean we have met our giving from last year and everything is trying to increase that giving this year. Uh, so thank you, everybody, as you have continued giving strongly, whether to this or just to the church in general. Passing to the peace, Mark is going to assign you to a breakout room for about three minutes uh, at that time. Introduce yourself, and how have you found peace during this past month? All right, let us continue. Prayers of the people. We're going to hear a version of Holy, Holy, Holy. It is Trinity Sunday. We have to hear that song by Sufjan Stevens. And while that plays, um, please chat in your prayers, and then I'll pray afterwards. <laughs> Oh, 
inside of thee There is none beside thee God in three persons God in three persons God in three persons God in three persons Together, let us pray. Holy Spirit, we ask that you come among us. You pour your spirit over us and through us, and you help us to realize that we are one people and we are connected in ways that we will never understand. We lift up all of these prayers to you, those that were written, those that were not written those that we said in our hearts, and those that we don't even have the words to say. We ask for your healing upon this world. And we ask that you might even make us part of that healing process. In your name we pray. Amen. Remembrance of communion. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. During this time of being physically distant, may we remember God's promises of love and forgiveness are not rooted in our actions and abilities. They are firmly planted in God's action through the Holy Spirit. When we have gathered for worship in the past, we have heard the words, blood of Christ shed for you and body of Christ given for you. Those words are as true today as they were the first time you heard them or the last time you heard them. Whether that was March 15th in our sanctuary or decades ago in a church that no longer exists, God's love and forgiveness comes to us through the word and sacrament through our time of exile from the church building. As we fast from these sacraments, may we rely solely on the word of God to do what it says, love and forgive. Together, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We have some announcements. There are always a, there's always a new Sunday school lesson on the church website. So uh, it generally consists of a 10, 15 minute video that your child can watch and then something to do afterwards. Those are put out by Spark House, uh, which is where we get our normal Sunday school curriculum from. So please check that out as you need. Also on our website, we have a new tab under Grow. We have anti-racist resources. And then you'll open up to a page and it gives videos, movies, books, podcasts, articles to read. We are also starting to compile uh, ones that are appropriate for children. So please, as you would like to continue learning, here is a great place for you to find resources to continue that process. I also want to mention this. In Portsmouth today, a unity rally is occurring, and it is titled A Rally Honor Loss of Sins. It is taking place at North, North Church at noon. They ask that if you attend, please practice as much as you can social, safe social distancing measures. The pastor from North Star AMZ, AME Zion Church in Newington was asked to give um, – the invocation to uh, begin the speakers, and he has invited all other area clergy to stand with him as he does that. So I will be joining him along with other clergy from the area. 
Uh, all people are welcome to join us for this. Uh, this is organized by Joanna Kelly, a downtown Portsmouth business owner, and people from the police, fire departments, police and fire commissioners, the city council and city manager have been invited to join. I don't know who will be joining from all of those places, um, but they will be there. Yes, uh, Chris and Crawford asked, and wear masks. Yes, wear masks. We're going to be a lot of people. Um, that was not mentioned specifically, but it is a good thing to do. I was at a uh, rally or a vigil, I should say that, in Dover this, the past week, and everybody is wearing masks. I was really impressed with it. So if you'd like to join us for that, you may. If you want to sit in the sanctuary, that is continually going on each week. We'll send out a sign up genius. Mark will do that. Opportunities are Tuesday um, and Thursdays. So please look for those links. You have a half hour time slot you can sign up for. Uh, also practice um, safe guidelines, uh, health, health guidelines, safety guidelines when you come and when you leave. And those are posted right when you walk into the doors of the church. So please sign up for that if you'd like to join us in the sanctuary. Uh, BYOB squared, it needs to move this week. Uh, Dover's High School is doing the virtual graduation. So showing that online Wednesday evening. As you saw, Sam is graduating. So we'll be watching that uh, as a family. So BYOB is moving to Thursday at 7 p.m. We continue our conversation of watching the video, The Cross and the Lynching Tree. That link to that video is on our website under the anti-racist resources. You can find it there. Here's a little bit more about Operation Blessing that Kurt talked about. Thank you, Kurt. That was really fantastic the way you were able to uh, um, name the three ways in which Operation Blessing um, functions. They're in need of help continually. Uh, you can do that through church. You can do that through them. There is their number at the bottom or email mark if you want to drop off items at the church. So thank you for all your help as we continue helping our community. Birthdays and anniversaries, or as Ron Swanson might say, happy age advancement day. I suppose congratulations are in order. And then we have Bob Ross saying, we'll just put a little happy anniversary right here. Yeah, that's nice. Do we have any birthdays and anniversaries that we can celebrate? Go ahead and chat those in. None so far. Dick and Yvonne, 49. Congratulations. Gene and Chandler, 48. Not quite like Dick and Yvonne, but not bad, Chandler, or Dalzells. Eighth grade graduation of Noah Berg, right on. Micah is right there with it. He's moving on to high school next year. Any others? All right, we will continue with our sending him. Tom Burnt's birthday is tomorrow. Thank you. And Monica Bellavo is turning 30. You can keep those coming in as we listen to our sending him. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Sin and sadness drive the gloom of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All thy words with joy surround me, earth and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around me, center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, valley, meadow, flashing sea. Chanting bird and flowing fountain, call us to rejoice in thee. Thou art giving and forgiving, 
sing never blessed well spring of the joy of living ocean depth of happy rest thou art father christ our brother all who live in love are thine teach us how to love each other lift us to the joy divine have the Malins for benediction and sending. Hello, Holy Trinity. Hello, Holy Trinity. It's Ed and Fran from our apartment in Portsmouth. Watching the bridge go up and the boats go by. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. If anybody would like to join us for fellowship, now is the time. If not, we hope to see you back here next Sunday. There's also Wednesday morning Bible study. Uh, BYOB on Thursday. A lot of ways to connect. Have a great day, everybody.